Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video tutorial for Photoshop, I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process of creating this Orton effect. Stick around to the end of the video because once you've covered the basics, I'm going to show you some additional steps that you can use with your images to make sure that you end up with fantastic end results. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. So this is our starting photograph and as you can see it's already been edited and it's a great candidate for the Orton effect. There's lots of good colour in there, some great detail and it really is a good starting point. So the image has already had some processing done to it so all the colours and everything had got where I want it to be. I've also gone through and sharpened the image possibly a little bit more than I normally would because when you combine the two different effects you want that sharpness. And when we're on the subject, what exactly is the Orton effect and how is it created? Well, basically, it's from two exposures. You'll have one exposure that is set up to be perfectly sharp and in focus, and the second exposure will be done to be blurred and out of focus. And then in the processing stage in the darkroom, they would have been combined together to make sure that you had a combination of both a very sharp image and a very soft blurred and out of focus image. And combined together, you've got that sort of ethereal kind of glow to the picture. So we're going to do the same kind of thing in Photoshop. So all I'm going to do to start off with is duplicate this background layer by using Control or Command J on the keyboard. That will create a duplicate layer. The next thing we're going to do is come to the Image menu and we're going to come down and say Apply Image. And we're going to make sure that the blending mode is set to screen. So whatever option is in there, by default it may be normal or you may have something you've used in the past. Just make sure you set that to be screen. Then click OK and that's the first stage done. We're now going to duplicate that layer one more time, so Control command j to duplicate that layer. And we're going to change the blend mode of this now from screen mode, and we're going to put that into multiply mode. So all we're going to do is come up to the layer menu, choose the different blend modes, and set that to be multiply. And you can see that darkens the, the whole image down and really makes everything much more punchy and vibrant. So that's the first two stages. Next up, we're going to select by holding the shift key down both those layers. So layer one and layer two, they're both copies. Then we're going to come up and we're going to merge those layers together. So we can use the keyboard shortcut of Control E or we can use the menu option. So next up, we want to apply a blur to this so we can get that second exposure being blurred. So what we're going to do is come up to the filter menu. We're going to come down and we're going to choose blur and Gaussian blur. Set this to whatever you think is going to work well for you. There's no specific setting in this. It really comes down to what works with the image and the resolution you shot it in. So I'm going to set this to around 5 pixel radius and click OK, and you can see that now blurs everything out quite nicely. So next up, all I'm going to do is use the Opacity slider to merge the blurred exposed image with the sharper image that's underneath. So all we need to do is come to the Opacity slider and just start to drop that down until we get the effect that I want. So you can see when we do that, we get the effect of the blur being applied to it, but we also reduce the amount of saturation that's applied to the image. Adjust this to whatever you think is going to work well. So you can see if we take it further down, we get less of the effect further up. It's just kind of all blurred and out of focus. So set it to whatever you think is going to work well. Just drop that down about 35. Okay, so now we've got the basic effect, but what we're finding is that everything is now being affected by it. So even the things like the structure and the tree trunks and so on. So what I'm going to do in this additional step is I'm going to go through and I'm going to apply some sharpness back into it because it kind of just draws your attention to the photograph a little bit more. Obviously, purely optional and entirely up to you. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. So we're going to zoom in on the objects that we want to sharpen. Once we've done that, we're going to come over to the layer that has the blur on it and we're going to create a layer mask. Now once we've done that, we can now start painting out the blurred effect. But obviously I don't want to go 100%, so in other words it's glaringly sharp compared to the blurry glowy background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my color chip to be a mid-gray. And then when I start painting this on, I'm only getting a 50% or around 50% of the sharpened image showing through. So we kind of mask in part of it out while retaining some of the shadow, the, the blur detail. So let's take a look at doing that again in this image. So let's just zoom in. You can see the effect now completely. So let's just choose the paintbrush, making sure that we've got that gray color set and we've got the layer mask selector. So just ensure that we click on the layer mask, the little square lines are around that. So now if I just increase the size of the brush, as I start painting over this, we start to bring back some of that detail and sharpness. 
while still retaining some of the glow and the blur. Now obviously this is the kind of thing you're going to want to take some time over to make sure you get the best end result. And because we're working with a mask, if we make any kind of mistakes, we can easily flip this over so we're painting with white and we can paint that mask back out. So we've always got this completely non-destructive way of applying this effect. So we can just simply come down and as like I say, I would take a lot more time and effort going over this. But you can see once we start doing this, we start to bring back a little sharpness, a little bit more detail back into the structure that we want to sort of draw attention to. I may even do the things like the rocks over on the left hand side. Like I say, the tree trunk. And because we're dealing with this being only about 50% opacity, we're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting that nice glow, that nice autumn effect, and bringing back some of the sharpness to the image. So taking your time and going through this, you can very quickly and easily create a great looking effect and pull out the detail in the key areas that you want to focus on in your image. Now, obviously, like I say, I'm really not spending much time at all doing this, but it's going to give you an idea of, of how it look. So that'll do for now. Like I say, I would spend a lot more time doing this. Let's just do this rock as well. So that brings back a little detail into it. So we can now see the effects. So let's just zoom back out, back to where we were. So that gives us that little bit of sharpness gives us the autumn effect in the background so we have that nice soft glow and I think with a fall or autumn image like this it can really work well. Now obviously you could spend a lot more time and pick out a lot more detail and get a great end result but hopefully what this video has done is it's shown you how to achieve that effect quickly and easily. Well I hope you found this video useful if you did please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that's added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.